Turtle Nerds, welcome back to another video. In today's video, my hair still makes me look homeless. However, I'm going to give you a whole tour of my entire room and all of the crazy things that I have going on in here. So a lot of you guys have been asking me how dorm plus turtles plus fish, you know, how does this work? Some of you guys are going off to school and wondering if you can bring your animals with you. And to that I say, check that it's okay with your school first. And if they're semi-lenient, exploit all of their rules. For example, my school is known as like one of the most pet friendly campuses in the United States. And so I now have an understanding with the pet life people, sort of. They leave me alone and I do crazy off the wall things with some aquariums and like a whole hundred gallon tub and all this stuff down here because I'm a disaster and I like my turts. So with that being said, uh, welcome to my crib MTV. So the first thing that I have here is my 100 gallon turtle stock tank. This was set up like really out of nowhere pretty much. I didn't even make a video on it really and it might not stay set up. It's a 100 gallon stock tank with an Eheim Jaeger 300 watt heater and a Fluval U4 internal filter. Mercury vapor bulb, uh, 160 watts I believe. And I just have some wood and cinder blocks to make a basking area and a couple caves for them with some crushed coral aragonite at the bottom. This is for them to wear down their crush plates that we know grow like our fingernails. They need to be worn down over time otherwise they'll get all overgrown and wonky. Please excuse the uh, orange color. That's simply from the tannins of the wood because I just got that wood piece recently. This I just changed up yesterday. Normally this wood is placed horizontally this way and that wouldn't be there but one of these guys is showing a little bit of signs of nesting or sometimes I heard that terrapins like to brewmate in substrate so I gave them some sand to go and play around it. We have this little male northern diamondback terrapin here. So he's a male because he got a thick tail and this is my female who's a little bit chunky a little overweight so i am trying to combat that as well this year here's the fluval filter that's facing the wrong way because they knock it around if you are an og viewer that's the same log that i had last year for bean and pancake we have some cinder blocks here and a couple of guppies and sort of fish just kind of swimming around down there my school allows aquariums up to 20 gallons uh, and up to two small pets but i don't like rules uh, there's no getting around it I am breaking lots and lots and lots of rules. I'm not saying that it's okay. Don't do what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. I'm a bad influence. Hi, please stop begging for food. Sometimes you may want to reconsider bringing your turtles to school because they'll do this at three o'clock in the morning. They are crackheads. Crackheads. Hello, sir. May I interest you in some good, wholesome crack? I should also mention that I have one more final to go tomorrow before I am free from this hellish landscape that they call a school. And then I have another year and another semester before I graduate, which is great because I'm done with school. I just got a 63 on an exam that I spent over 10 hours studying for. Oh, knowledge is dumb and turtles are better. I'm on my last brain cells. I'm losing it. I don't care. I just want to show you guys cool stuff. This video is what it is. Boomer. So after you observe this lovely 100 gallon aquarium tub stock tank thingy, we come down here to a surprise aquarium that nobody has seen before. This is a 20 gallon long planted aquarium with no filter, no CO2, and just two 10,000K lights. This is a dirted aquarium, which means that the substrate is just pretty much topsoil. It's organic miracle Grow capped with gravel, but clearly the dirt has worked its way up. You can see that the plants really, really enjoy the dirt. That's how they have totally taken over this tank. I got this entire pre-established tank for $20. The plants in this tank, in an eighth of the tank, are worth more than $20. So I had to buy it. I've got some least killifish in here. They're native to Florida. There's a couple of little like guppies in here as well. These are all a bunch of crypts and whatnot. We have some java moss up here, some type of valve that has totally taken over uh, here. Check out, I got some really fat cherry shrimp. There's one there, there's one back there. There's no filtration or heater, just a power head and the plants pretty much do all the work, but I'm doing regular water changes on this bad boy. Look at him go, he's munch crunching. So we have tub, 100 gallons, tank, 20 gallons, and then on my desk here, we have a nice 
10 gallon aquarium. Hey, there's my Amano shrimp, named after the man himself, because he usually uses these shrimp to eat string algae in his aquascapes. And I have two male and three female endlers in here. It looks a little rough because the wood is leaching a whole butt ton of tannins. Down here, I have some dwarf baby tears, which everyone says is like impossible to grow. And it's actually doing fairly well. There's some dead bits between like the new growth. And then up on the driftwood, this is Fissidens fontanus, which is pretty neat. I glued a little bit of dwarf baby tears to the driftwood as well. There's some floating salvinia. Hello, tiger endlers photobombing. So we have the 100 gallon tub, 20 gallon tank, 10 gallon tank, and then we have my lovely bed. And if we go underneath this beauty, ta-da! We have more turts. This is my 29 gallon unfiltered, unheated spotted turtle tub. There's some pothos in here, some java moss, some leaf litter I have, and there's little baby jelly. He's actually been thriving in this tub more than he was in the kiddie pool, if you guys remember last year. He really did not like that. He likes this, it's more secure, it makes him feel better. And here's the squad of baby terrapins. There's two ornates and three northerns. You can see they're all begging for food because they're adorable and really cute. You can check these fellas out. They're doing really heckin' good in here. They're growing real nicely, especially this fella. He's probably my favorite, but don't tell the others. Then there's this little guy who was the runt, who still is the runt and is little, but is growing quite significantly, but nothing compared to Nilla, who is getting massive. You can see there's more black now on his shell than yellow because that's going to grow in in ornate terrapins. So we have this, we have this, and then, oh he bailed! I knew I should have started filming before. He was just in the water and then little Otis ran away. But you can see he's got like little burrows and whatnot back there and he is really really liking this muddy as heck enclosure. If I can find him I can show you. Oh there he is, he's in his little hide. Let's pull him out for you guys to see real quick. Check him out! See his shell's not all messed up anymore and his growth isn't as smooth as I would like so I'm considering doing a little bit more of an aquatic environment but I might flood the enclosure just a little bit more for his sake but you can see he's starting to get big and he is growing he eats full-sized Missouri aquatic turtle diet he takes it down and eats it better than jelly does he is an absolute pig look at him go look at him munch these pellets look how good he does it I'll put in worms in this enclosure and he will eat the entire thing. And the worm is like three times longer than he. Ben hit his head, hell. <laughs> He's simultaneously a grumpy old man and the most powerful being in the universe. So you walk in and then you got a tub here, aquarium there, aquarium there. Nothing under my bed, don't worry about that pet life. And then you have Ben's tank here. And this is a 20 gallon-ish saltwater aquarium with a firefish and a clownfish and a six line wrasse and the clownfish again because he is a nut job and he likes to bite Ben. It's true. There's a conch there, some Christmas tree worms, which is pretty neat. There's a bird's nest up there that's growing, some bubble tip anemones, that thing, that other thing, this green star polyp. Ben doesn't actually do like, I mean, he does a lot of maintenance on it and keeping up with it, but it's not as much work as I thought it would be. And he's been a bad influence and told me to get aquariums. So I got fresh water, but he doesn't like fresh water. Nope. And there's some other frags that I don't know. So I don't want to flex my lack of knowledge. Oh my God, how could it, where are they? Where are they? The sexy shrimp. There's shrimp in here called sexy shrimp because they throw that in a circle. They just take their butts and fling them in the air. See, check them out. Oh, this is trippy. This is what college is like, kids. If you uh, do acid. Look, the shrimp's coming out to say hello. And never mind, he is a hermit like me. Ben's now like at the point where he can start fragging the corals and starting to like sell them and maybe be able to make some money. Instead, I rely on YouTube ad revenue, which is barely enough to afford a single Wawa sandwich. So we have something 20 something gallon tank there. 20. 20. According to pet life, it's 20. 20. 20. 100, because I don't give a shit. 20, actually 20. 10. 29 gallon spotted turtle tub. 29 gallon hatchling terrapin tub. Literally a shoe drawer, except it's a swamp land. Okay, that's that's it. I need to go study. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, support my Patreon, please, because I put stuff up there as much as I can. And like I said, I can afford a single Wawa sandwich with Give YouTube revenue. Hit the subscribe thingy and the bell, whatchamacallit, and I, I don't care. Do what you want. I'm not gonna try to force you to do whatever. You're a free person.